So now recording. So welcome to the UNCG Libraries webinar on Credo Reference, a scholarly alternative to Wikipedia and Google. My name is Sam Harlow. I'm the online learning librarian. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And uh, Tamara Swift is a UNCG Libraries information science student. And she is doing a uh, practicum and capstone with our department in research outreach and instruction. So in these capstones and practicums, the way I do them um, in terms of online, I've been doing them online even pre pandemic is that uh, Tamara or the student I'm working with create some online learning objects, um, as well as host a webinar and this is what Tamara chose to do it on. Um, so thank you, Tamara. I think this is a really useful um, subject. So Tam, I'm going to start by introducing Credo, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Google and Wikipedia and like what we do in our library information literacy uh, stuff. And then uh, Tamara is going to be doing a demo of Credo Reference and all of the stuff that it provides. Hey guys, thank you for coming to my first webinar. Excited about this and thought Credo would be neat. It's something I discovered in graduate school, was not aware of it when I was an undergrad. But basically to touch base on our agenda, we're gonna touch on what is Credo Reference, what's it do, why Credo Reference, Sam's gonna compare Google and Wikipedia. And then I'm gonna get into demo, demoing Credo Reference including many features that you guys may not know about. I know I didn't know about at the time and we're gonna kind of demo some basic search, something that you guys may not have time in your one shot literacy sessions. So basically, quickly, what is it? I found a formal definition for Credo, and it states it's a library database that contains full text dictionaries, encyclopedias, and other reference books that can be searched using keywords or key terms. You can use the encyclopedia to find definitions, tidbits, articles, current date, and back in time on a topic, and you can even find pronunciation of medical terms if you're doing medical research, whether you're a pre-med or a nursing student. Credo does allow you to search on popular topics already provided for you within the main page or within the search box. As you see here, you can enter your search term. Okay, so I'm going to start us off by talking a little bit about Credo Reference um, and comparing it to Wikipedia. So I think we all probably know what Wikipedia is. You can let me know in the chat. Um, but um, and I know there's people here from all different backgrounds, but if you work with students, whether in the library or doing instruction or yourself, um, do you use Wikipedia? And if you do use it, uh, how do you use it? And uh, do you trust it? And you can just put that in the chat and I'll um, look through it. Um, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I do want to kind of just uh, see what how we use Wikipedia. So I'll start as people might be putting it in the chat. Um, I use Wikipedia often, I call it like uh, in terms of going off on like a tab dive, right? Like I'll like look up um, an author of a fiction book I'm reading and then I'll see that they have a connection to another author and then I'm clicking and clicking. So I just will use it to kind of get a background information. Um, so yeah, Sarah in the uh, chat points out using it for references. We're gonna talk about that, great, and background info. Um, so a part of um, my job as an online learning librarian and all liaison librarians, and I know I think some of them are here, we work uh, virtual chat, reference chat, um, and we see what students are asking us. A lot of us also do information literacy instruction, and we see Wikipedia being used a lot for this, for this getting background information. But we also see a lot when re research assignments are um, assigned, um, understandably, there is a rule that you can't actually cite from Wikipedia. So when we use Wikipedia and think about Wikipedia, a lot of what we're doing is like telling students about how we're using it. And yeah, and Tiffany is saying um, informally for background information, but I'm um, probably not going to cite it. Exactly. So a lot of times when we're doing this, we're like, yes, you can use Wikipedia, you know, to get an idea and keyword creation and that kind of thing. So a lot of what we do is keyword creation. So um, uh, we, this is linked to a tutorial um, from the library, our research tutorials on how to create keywords where we say it's okay to use Google, Wikipedia, things like that to get a, the lay of the land in terms of finding keywords. Um, we also use it in terms of finding um, lateral reading. So lateral reading is something when we evaluate a source, um, instead of reading vertically, right, from top to bottom, and then thinking about who is the author, 
who is, you know, what is the bias of just this piece? Is it a current piece? And what are they citing? It's thinking about what are other people saying about the topic? So for example, if I find a website that says climate change isn't real, right? Like what are other people saying about that? And what are other people saying about the author or company or authors of the, um, of the website? So for example, you can find websites that say climate change isn't real, but if you look into it laterally by opening up multiple tabs, looking at Wikipedia pages on the companies, um, you can see that they're usually written by lobbyists who are trying to um, sway things one way or the other with uh, laws. Again, I'm not an expert <laughs> on how this all works, but that's how we mean it in terms of lateral reading, opening up new tabs. So if you want to learn more about this, we do have a link here to an open source uh, thing from Mike Caulfield, and it's the way um, fact checker, what's what fact checkers use to evaluate sources as well. And our information literacy coordinator, Jenny Dale, does some workshops on it. We also have a link here on what is Wikipedia, and I think this is something that it's important to talk to um, with our students. So Wikipedia is an online free content encyclopedia project helping to create a world in which everyone can freely share the sum of all knowledge. So anyone can um, contribute. It's written collaboratively by largely anonymous volunteers who write without pay. So of course we can see positives and negatives to this. And one question we do get a lot is that Wikipedia is peer reviewed. It is just peer reviewed differently than something like Credo, which we'll talk about in a second. So another thing about Wikipedia that's nice is that it does have a lot of breadth. There are 56 million articles as of now in 300 languages, um, including, uh, you know, what's about almost 6.3 million written in English. Uh, so keep that in mind um, is that it's a good place to go, especially for your students getting started about really specific um, topics. So uh, that is what Wikipedia is. So um, in terms of this, we kind of mentioned it when y'all mentioned it in the chat, right? Like we're probably not going to cite um, or let students, not let students, but we're, we're going to recommend that students don't cite from Wikipedia directly, but really go down into their references. Um, but these are some resources if you want to learn more or think more about why maybe we don't want to cite from directly from Wikipedia and academia. Um, and these two, so this is a written by um, a librarian. It's a guide at University of Illinois talking about some of the issues that we really just went over. Um, but these are two articles from Wikipedia and where they actually say that that, um, Wikipedia and research papers may be considered unacceptable because Wikipedia is not a reliable source. And then they go on to say that, yeah, we do say maybe you don't cite directly from it, but check the references. And what we're always teaching in our information literacy and research instruction is that you need to really think through your research and that, um, it, that this is really a starting point for your research, not an ending point. And they mentioned peer reviewed articles, um, citing from the like original source kind of deal. And then also the idea of using Using your journal, your um, judgment. So again, I like that Wikipedia is being open about how they work, and I like that they're kind of uh, reinforcing what we as librarians are talking about often. There's also another article from Wikipedia on the reliability of Wikipedia, where they cite from actual studies done on the reliability of Wikipedia, and they uh, this one's kind of dated, but they do say that sometimes they find that they're significantly more biased. But that a lot of times that's to do with the length of their articles. They can be longer than a, than a traditional encyclopedia, such as Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, so if you're interested in this and want to learn more about this, this isn't a webinar purely about Wikipedia. But we did just want to give you a lay of a land of maybe the difference between Credo and Wikipedia when we go into it. So Credo is different, right, because it's a it's published by a publishing company, uh, an academic publishing company, and that it has 780, 787 unique titles, but that includes encyclopedias, reference books, and online books that can kind of, again, be a great place to use for your um, you know, getting started from your research and they're from published sources um, and peer reviewed in a more structured way than maybe Wikipedia. Um, so again, here's a link to the reference of a screenshot of references within Wikipedia. We've all seen this, but this is again where we usually tell students to go to, right? Um, sometimes Wikipedia articles can be really long. Um, we'll recommend that they look at the content, what is being said in these Wikipedia articles, but going down here and looking at what are they citing? And you can see here they're citing dictionary they're citing um, scholarly articles and a lot of times they do give you like a bibliography where it's to further reading right and you can see here a lot of them are scholarly articles um, with uh, or scholarly books uh, resources that can help you uh, help students kind of get a 
a starting point. And again, always thinking about Wikipedia and Credo as a starting point for research. Um, so where does Google lay in this uh, deal? Uh, so I think, again, we most of us in this uh, Zoom meetings room know about Google, and they know about how it works. And I assume we all use it. And I can tell you from doing instruction with students that students definitely use it. Um, and even whether they're using it in incognito windows or not, um, they uh, are using it in terms of those powerful algorithms, right? So Google, they are very powerful. They have a lot of money um, and they, uh, their algorithms are so powerful that you can throw in like full research sentences, hypothesis, like everything, and it will shoot you out results. But the thing about Google is that they index the entire web. So if a student is trying to get started on a topic, let's say they're doing immigration, it's going to shoot them back like 3.9 million. Um, so using something like Credo or even Wikipedia over Google is going to be better because it's going to narrow down your results and give your students uh, key, you know, key words and inspiration and a good base. Whereas Google overall can be very overwhelming and even Google Scholar, because what Google Scholar's algorithms are trying to do is make an attempt at finding peer reviewed articles, but there's no guarantee that what is in there is actually peer reviewed. A lot of times it could be dissertations, it could be from predatory journals, there's just not a way of knowing, especially for undergraduates. So if you're interested in learning more about Google, um, there's a link here to a library guide that we have that links out to like the bias of Google algorithms in um, Google. And then um, this is a webinar by Jenny Day our information literacy coordinator on algorithms of oppression, where it really goes into details about um, Google and how it works on the back end and quoting scholars and how it works, um, particularly concerning like bias and searching and how that works on the back end. So now I'm going to mute myself and turn my video off and hand it back over to Tamara. Um, we're going to do a quick stop screen deal and then Tamara is going to take over and I will monitor the chat. Okay, let's try the share. See if it works. All right, Sam, can you see that properly? Credo, yes. Awesome. So we are going to do a quick review. Hopefully, I won't get too wordy about Credo. This is basically your launch pad, as I like to call it, or your homepage, as it's usually known. Here it gives you some current research popular topics topics that Credo has found within search history. So if your research topic by chance falls within these, or if you're just curious, you can check these out. Obviously, if not, you can input your keyword in the search tool here and see what information you get back. First, let's move and check out the menu. Basically, you have got four separate items that you can search on. You've got topics, reach search, quick tips, all titles, and it even translates the information into these chosen languages. So that's a great tool if you're not a main English speaker or reader. But let's flip back over to topics. All right, topics, you can see it gives you 11,351 tidbits to go through and they're all alphabetized, which is great. So if you're curious, like on the first screen, you can scroll through and search. But I am going to search on a specific topic. I'm going to hit something from my undergrad fashion. I have a textile design degree. So we're just going to click here under all subjects. It drops down. You can see there's various subjects to choose from. I'm going to choose under arts and leisure. and click fashion. Let's check the chat real quick. Sam, does someone have a question? I saw something chatting. No, it's out. just me dropping links in there if they want to follow along and create. Okay, okay, cool. I didn't want to miss, miss a question. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> this is the first time I've done this like this. All right, you see all these terms, 65 topics, which are related to fashion. I'm going to select one, Coco Chanel. You can scroll down, choose, or everyone likes the quick you can come up here and enter it in the quick search and it'll bring up coco chanel gives you a basic information about her she was a designer known for the chanel suit and it brings up entries in the various books that are indexed through credo and you can search on those it also brings up the mind map 
which gives you some additional keywords. And also you've got some search engines that we find currently today under Jackson Library databases. So let's go back up here, click on research quick tips. This kind of like the webinars we have on Jackson's website, we've got some webinars on research. You've got how to avoid bias and searches, research questions. So these are all great for librarians or you can point your students out to them if they've got questions. And this is also located on the main page down at the bottom. So you've got two locations to find it. Next, we have all titles. As Sam mentioned earlier, we've got 798 titles that are indexed. You can scroll through, see what's available. Here's one that would hit me for fashion, but we're going to search through this and I can show you what it does. Again, we're gonna choose fashion under arts and leisure. You got fashion or let's change it up. I changed my mind. Let's do photography. It's another interest. So it'll bring up nine titles that center around the subject of photography and digital arts. But if we want to narrow it down, let's choose graphic design. We can type it in the search engine and just click search. And it only has two titles within its database that focus on graphic design. Also to you, you've got videos that you can search on. These actually focus on current topics or topics that have happened within the past few years. This one touches on the hate you give, the not young adult novel that focuses on police violence, which kind of hits home today with everything that's going on in our nation. And we can flip back over to home and we're gonna do, excuse me, search through my notes. We're gonna do a basic search. I'm gonna enter in the term fashion. And this is a good start, a place to start with your research and keywords. It'll bring up a multitude of titles through the Credo Library, both dictionaries, guide to the social sciences, and various other titles. On the right side of the, field, the screen, excuse me, you've got the mind map. It actually gives you links to articles that have fashion within them. Like this one is Don't Fall for Fashion. We've also got EBSCO. And then again, we've got other sites that the student librarian or researcher can search on to find articles or books. Let's check WorldCat and see what it returns. And it's searching UNCG's library database. And it returns multitude of books on fashion. Clicking back over, give you an example of some interesting information. This would be good for graduating seniors. Is fashion designers under the occupational outlook handbook. This has been around. This was something I checked out when I was an undergraduate looking into first question was what the income level was going to be, but it gives you just that medium pay entry level education work experience. If fashion designer was not your end goal, you can click back on the heading, the title, and it gives you a multitude of information for other jobs that are out there to pursue. So let's click back and get back to the main results for fashion. And I'm going to dive into an actual title. I'm going to look for fashion media. And we've got two right here. You've got the 40s and the 50s. I'm going to choose the 50s. So I'm first going to check out by clicking fashion media, the header for the subject. And it brings back some general info in regards to fashion media in the 50s gives you some or gives you a view of a photo shoot from 
a magazine from Char Magazine. This was back in 1954. So it gives you some information, goes over illustrators, info on the magazines, how they were laid out. Good to search on if you're looking for history of fashion. It gives you an insight into what was going on in the field, illustrations, images, and so forth. On the right hand of the screen, you've got related searches based on individuals or items that happened within that time frame. I'm going to click on Richard Avedon. He's a, a photographer. And it pulls up information on Richard. Mr. Avedon throughout the encyclopedia, World of Art, the dictionary, Thames and Hudson, and two pulls up a mind map for him as well. Looking through on this page, you also have images and there's only one for him. And you can flip back to articles and then you've got filters, whereas you can filter down subjects, media. You can even um, pick your length if you want short article or long. And let's flip back. All right, I'm going to take a look at the actual book itself. This is cool. Gives you the basic information of the book, the publisher, when it was published and whether it's the first or a second or third edition. You have accessibility to the chapters within the book. You can also search on headings. And then it gives you images found throughout, which these are always cool. Good source of inspiration if you're a design student. So let's flip back over to contents. And we're going to go to the chapter that this article in the 1950s fashion opulence is found in. So that's actually chapter eight. So excuse me while I scroll real quick and look down. All right, you've got chapter eight. And you can see all the different subjects, topics they discuss within this chapter. We're going to look at the 1950s couture and opulence, but on suburban style. Really cool. So it gives you a brief synopsis, an image of what typical American fashions were back in the 50s. And just kind of goes over some designers that were found and other aspects like American film and music were inf circulating both influenced by fashion. So let's then click back there. We've got the headings and the images. And also too, if you didn't want to scroll, you can input a search word keyword into the search box itself. So let's go back to the main title fashion. Credo also lets you save articles or data sources to refer back to later. And they've got this cool little flag. You just click onto it and it saves that information piece. You can also click the actual article piece and you can save it under this as well. Sorry, clicks as I sorry saved it. Also too to help you guys with citation in papers or in advising your students. You have got four different types. It doesn't have Trabian, or is that referred to as Chicago now, I think. But you've got APA, Chicago, Harvard, MLA, and it also will export out and it does have Zotero available as well. So that's pretty cool. You can also print the page, share it. And this is, I thought was neat. It read aloud the article. So that is great for those that may be visually impaired. Whereas the font might be too small and it also translates. With the save aspect, 
it keeps a record right here where you can email it to yourself as well and format again citation. Another aspect of Credo's page, you can create a link if you wanted to link it out into your lessons into Canvas. And then you also have your search history. Within Credo, you can also do advanced search. So we're going to stick with the fashion world and I'm going to input Haute Couture and see what it returns. Again, multitude of titles from the dictionaries and encyclopedias. Pulls over the mind map. We're going to show you how this works real quickly too. It gives you various other keywords that can help the search. We'll click on Federation Francaise. And that also brings up additional terms, designers. You can click this out and it actually bring it out to where it's in a larger viewable screen. Okay, we can go back to advanced search. Type haute couture back in and you can actually filter down down here at the bottom of your screen. And we're going to select subjects of titles, arts and leisure, fashion. And you just click on the little arrows and it drops down more items. And we're going to check fashion design and hit search. And it kind of narrows down the results, brings some images into play as well. Does anyone have any questions so far? There's none in the chat right now. Okay. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. All right. And some additional resources I found outside of Credo's website that as instructors, you guys may find interesting. Credo actually has a toolbox and this is great. It gives you some click throughs. We're going to click on basic search. This gives you an actual, it's like an Adobe PDF that will take the individual through step by step if my computer would load, load it. So I'm just going to click on the first one to see if it clicks. Well, it does not. This is giving you an idea. It's a PDF. You can kind of see, there it goes. You can click through is the screenshots and basic information taking you step by step on the, in this case, a basic search. But it gives you additional information like advanced search, more detailed information on the mind map, finding a book. So I thought that was great information. Also, let me get to a new tab. Credo has a lip guide. And this gives you guys Credo information based per subject. And within, like for art history, it gives you images to where you can input the search box, gives you a video introduction into the content. And through here to, of course, now I don't recall where I saw it, but it also gives you information through it in regards to how to incorporate Credo into your lessons. You can put it into your learning management system for UNCG as Canvas. So Credo is a great tool that you can both use within research. You can pull it into your learnings with your students it can be linked into Cam Canvas. LibGuys can be pulled into there as well. There's videos, webinars on the Credo reference site, which these can be linked into learning management systems. And it gives you uh, 
and videos, sorry guys, videos showing how that is too. I can't recall where I saw it, but there it is, Credo Embeds. You can embed full text into your learning management systems. So it's a great tool for students to get to use as a jumping off base, help them get some keywords, get their research started, brainstorming, I like to say. It was great for, I used it last semester for a research paper. So it helped me out a lot. So that is the information I had today. I will open it up to questions and return it back to Sam. Let me stop my screen share. Any questions as we're wrapping up. And um, just a gentle reminder, I said at the beginning, this is our last one of the uh, semester. I was about to say season, <laughs> like we're like in a TV show. Um, but here is a quick form if you'd like to fill it out to let us know how we did today. And remember, you will get an email with this recording on it. Uh, and if someone signed up and couldn't come, they'll get the recording as well. Um, but this is our full um, webinar with the recording LibGuide, um, where we have all of our recordings posted as well. Um, so like if you missed the one we did on Dimensions AI, I think Megan's in here, uh, then you could check that out or anything like that. Uh, definitely do that. Um, so are there any questions? for me or Tamara. I'm doing that thing where I'm waiting. <laughs> virtual room. So hopefully y'all learned something today. Um, hopefully if you're a librarian, uh, you Maybe you wanna try it out more in uh, whatever your job is. Maybe if you're faculty or a student, you think, okay, great. I'm gonna have some great place for background information to help my students with keywords. Um, so um, hopefully you found this useful. I dropped a lot of links in the chat, um, including the link to the presentation and the link to the presentation will be sent uh, to the recording as well. So I'm not seeing any questions, I'm seeing a lot of thanks. So I do wanna say thank you to Tamara, um, my LIS practicum capstone student. I do wanna give Tamara a shout out. Uh, Tamara works a full-time job and is getting her master's degree in library and information science and did this practicum, which is 120 hours. So um, yay, Tamara, yes. Thanks guys. <laughs> that's a lot, uh, life is throwing a lot at us, right? And all in a pandemic. So I do want to give Tamara a, a huge thanks for all the work she's done this semester. This is kind of the, the, cumul the cumulative thing. Yeah. <laughs> Words are hard. Um, but thank you all for coming. Thank you, Tamara, for this great presentation. I learned some stuff. Uh, I have some new links to check out. Um, and I hope everyone has a great day. It's Wednesday. It's, it's Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Not Don't Wednesday. add a day to the week. <laughs> oh, no, yes, it's Thursday. And it's, it's and as Sarah pointed out in the chat, it is Earth Day. So um, yes, it is. If you're able, get outside today. It's pretty in Greensboro right now. It's pretty in Burlington. Um, yes, pretty in Burlington. So um, great. Well, thank you all so much. Thanks, guys. Bye.